Hey everybody, I'm back. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. There's always something when it comes to Wi-Fi and stuff like that. One minute I'm talking, next minute everything is off. But I'm back again, second time. Let's try this again. Trying to remember where I left off at. Left off at Centoya, since we're talking about the Miss Centoya Brown, 16-year-old girl. Um, that Centoya Brown, so she goes back to Johnny Allen House, the 43. 43-year-old white man that picked her up from this Sonic slash truck stop. So she goes to her, his house. She eats up. She she sits at the dining room table because he lives in the house. She sits at his, his dining room table and she eats his food because there's a picture of her Sonic cup sitting there. <coughs> you know, guns and stuff. He takes her around the house and shows um, her his guns. Um, she said in the documentary that he starts um, basically kind of bragging about himself, saying that because she mentioned something about where she was from, some port something. And then he started mentioning how he was in the army and he was a professional shooter or something. Then he starts going on about how women tend to want him for his money and that he wants to meet a woman and make, make love to her with desire. With desire. There's a reason why I'm mentioning that. I need to remember why I'm mentioning this whole desire thing. So she says, now, I don't know, because in the documentary, I don't know if I really heard anything about her being specific about them having sex, but they had to have had sex because he was found naked in the bed. So when, when she shot and killed him, he was found naked in the bed. Now she is saying, Centoya is saying that um, he was looking at her weird and giving her the certain type of eye like he was going to kill her. And he reached over on the side of the bed because they were both laying in the bed. And he reached over and she thought he was about to go on the side and pick up a gun and shoot her. So then she picked up his gun and shot him. Now, that's what she said. Shot him in the back of the head. I think she shot him a few times. But then what she does is she takes his wallet and his money and his keys to his truck and she leaves. And if I'm not mistaken, she goes back to the motel, hotel, whatever, where Cutthroat is at, where the pimp is at. Now, based on a little research that I did, not serious research but just a little research based on a little research i heard that um she started feeling um a little guilty about what she did and she wanted to know i think this is the next day the same day or the next day later on and she started wondering looking on the news to see if anyone had um reported or found him she said that no one found him so i think she had somebody follow her to his house she goes back to his house goes in there see he's still laying there <coughs> Ain't nobody found them. So she takes his cell phone that's there at the house, calls the police and let the police know that he's there dead. Then she leaves. Based on the little research I did, um, the police goes there, finds the body. I don't know, start talking to who, 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 and then end up going to the hotel, motel, wherever she's at with Cutthroat and arresting her. And I think they said something about they tried to pull out Cutthroat and she kind of ran out like, no, no, no. I did it. He had nothing to do with it. You know, always fighting for the, you know, don't want nothing bad to happen to the pimps. No, he didn't do it. I'm the one that did it. So, yeah, she got thrown in jail. And in 2000, I think in November of 2004 is when they were trying to decide if they were going to try her as an adult or as a, you know, a minor, which means that she probably would have got out of jail at 19. But they decided to try her as an adult. And she was found guilty in 2006, if I'm not mistaken, because by the time she got found guilty, she was already 18 years old. This was in 2006. And she was found guilty of first degree murder, felony murder, and aggravated battery. She was sentenced to 51 years to life for this incident. Okay. Now, let me just give you a little backstory on Centoya Brown. <coughs> For the people who didn't know, just from watching this documentary, that was very interesting because in the documentary, a few people talked, you know, about Centoya because Centoya name is Centoya Brown. Brown is her adoptive last name. Yes, she was adopted. So that's her adoptive last name. She was adopted by a black woman. And if I'm not mistaken, her name was Elanette, El El Ellen. Ellenette Brown. I'm just going to say that was her name. Her name was Ellenette Brown. It's a black woman. But in all actuality, Centoya's biological mother was a white woman. 
And I'm assuming because it was not mentioned, but she kind of looked like it, that her father was a black man, but the father was not mentioned not once in this documentary. But her mother, her biological mother, the white mother actually came and spoke and she said that she had not seen Centoya ever since Centoya was young, that she was um, bothered by the things that had happened in Centoya life, that now it, it was up to the point that, because at that time she had not been sentenced yet, that she was in jail for killing somebody. Centoya's mom said that she had, and Centoya's mom name is um, Georgina, for short they call her Gina, Georgina Mitchell. So Gina said that she had Centoya when she was 16 years old, apple don't fall too far from the tree as far as drama and chaos. She said that she had Centoya when she was 16 years old. She said she was shocked to even find out that she was pregnant and she was kind of in denial all the way up until she gave birth. She said up until eight months, she drank heavily. She drank before and after Centoya was born, but she drank during her pregnancy all the way to eight months. She said at the eight month mark, she was introduced to crack cocaine. She said not only was she introduced to crack cocaine, but she was introduced in a way to go and get the crack cocaine, which was prostitution after don't fall too far from the tree. So that's exactly what her daughter was doing at 16 years old. Now, Gina says, now, like I said, she never mentions the father's name, but now we hear that she has an alcohol problem and she has a drug problem. But now at this time in the documentary, she's sitting with her mother, which is Centoya's grandmother. And her name was, I think her name was Jane. Her name was Joan. And they were kind of going back and forth. And you can see that Gina, Centoya's mother, was saying that in so many words, I think she wanted to try to raise her daughter, but she had a lot going on. She said that she had her own apartment. She was going to beauty school. She was trying to get her life together. But her mother was like, you know, you shouldn't be 16 years old trying to have a baby. You know, that, um, that um, of course, she wasn't going to be able to raise her. So based on this documentary, Gina, Centoya's mom, was friends with the lady who ended up adopting Centoya, her children. So they were all friends. And Centoya's mother used to go over to the Ellen. We're going to call her Ellen. She used to go over to Ellen's house. And Ellen said that she didn't notice that um, Gina was pregnant initially because she said at that time all the kids wore big clothes. It was her son that came to her and said, can you take Gina's baby because she's getting into a lot of trouble. And she said at the time she didn't know what the lot of trouble was, but Gina ended up going going in and out of jail after she had Centoya. And if I'm not mistaken, she said she had Centoya from six months all the way to 18 months, if I'm not mistaken. So her mother gave up, gave her up um, early on. And then they said some things too that she was Centoya was kidnapped by a family member. So a lot of things went on in this girl's life early on. Now, let me tell you a little something about the grandmother, Centoya's mother, that she really didn't know anything about, but now her grandmother. The, come to find out on Centoya's mother's side of the family, there's a lot of bad things that happened. Not only did Centoya's mother try to commit suicide several times because she has the word suicide tattooed on her arm, she said that her mother, Joan, the mother tried to kill herself. And the mother's sister, one of the sisters shot and killed herself. And the other sister tried to kill herself many times. And the father, so Gina, Centona, 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 y'all know who I'm talking about. Her mom, aunt, mother, and father, she said her father shot himself in the head and killed himself. So it was suicide and mental things going all on on that side of the family. The grandmother said, this is what the grandmother said. She said that at 19 years old, she got married. She said the thought of her husband coming to her, ask, asking her for sex, she said, made her cringe. So she knew that she had to get out of that relationship. I feel like something had to happen prior to that in order for her to cringe every time her husband would come to her for sex. But she didn't get off into that. She just said that at 19, she got married and the thought of her husband coming to her with sex made her cringe. She knew she had to get out of that. But what ended up happening, I guess the husband told his friend Tommy and the Tommy man came over to Joan's house, came in, she said, slapped her, um, physically abused her, then took her to the room and raped her. She said from that rape, 
Centona Centoya's mother, Gina, was born. Can you believe that? You hear the things that's going on? So Centoya's, so Gina's father is a father because he raped her mother. The mother tried to kill herself. The mother, her daughter tried to kill herself. The mother's sisters, one sister killed herself. The other one tried to kill herself. And the father shot herself in the head. There's a lot of things going on. Plus there's drugs, plus there's prostitution. Plus the mother said that she had been molested. The grandmother said she had molested, had been molested if I'm not mistaken. In addition to Gina, then you got people sitting up here actually on YouTube or actually making videos saying that, you know, almost as if this was Centoya's fault that these things happened to her. She was born in the world. I'm pretty sure when she came out of her mama's vagina, she didn't come out of there with thoughts of becoming a prostitute. I'm pretty sure she didn't come out of there with thoughts of having orgies and being mistreated and being slapped around. Something have had to, something had to happen to this girl to cause her at 16 to have ran away from her foster mother and out here with pimps, letting them abuse you, jumping in, jumping in cars with 43-year-old nasty, nasty man. Because first of all, that Johnny Allen man, the one that she shot and killed, this he's pretty dang on nasty. Now, when I'm hearing people talk about the story, I'm not really hearing them saying anything about this nasty man, which we just got to keep it real. Everything comes from something. Something probably happened to him. Maybe he was raped or molested when he was young. Maybe he's saying some horrible things happened to his mother, which caused him to have a lack of respect for women. The reason why you feel the need to run around and search for, for a sex pay for sex out on the street and then don't even care who get in your car. I have absolutely no problem with little babies getting in the car, with 16-year-old children getting in the car. I heard people say that Centoya is uh, 16 years old. She knew better. Yeah, but she just had a lot of issues going on. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be um, as honest and open as I can be talking about this story because it's... Um, it is a lot to hear. It's a lot with this story, but let me say this about Centoya. First of all, I think she's a very smart and intelligent girl. She's been through a lot, so she's def definitely strong, and you can tell that when she talks, <coughs> certain things that she said. But um, Centoya, so during the documentary, she had a list, right? And she wrote down the list of everybody that she had sex with. If I'm not mistaken, there was 36 people. She said she had 36 sex partners. This is at 16 years old. So she starts reading off certain things about the sex partners, which, man, just very sad. It's just very sad. So she's reading the list, and she said that she had 36 sex partners. This is some of the things I wrote down. She said 21 of the 36, she felt obligated to have sex with them. So 21 of them, she felt obligated. She said 28 of the 36 sex partners was bad experiences. She said 22 of the 36 people that she had been with, she said that she didn't know them or she hardly, hardly knew them. That's what she said. She said three of the 36 sex partners that she had was family members. Three of them was family members. She said five of them were women. And she said, um, she said out of the 36 sex partners that she had been with by the age of 16 years old, because we know that it stopped at 16 because she went to jail at 16. So this stopped at 16. She said only four of them she actually liked or lusted over. Only four. So 34 of these guys you didn't even like. She said, I think she said. She said nine, only nine of the 36 were, um, they, they had protected sex, only nine. And she said four of the 36 sex parties that she had were from, from prostitution. So that's how you know that this wasn't some huge prostitution thing going on, because only four of them were from her standing out on the street doing prostitution. I just thought that that was so sad that she went through that in her life, 30 uh, four, 16 years old and had 36 sex partners 
And, you know, 22 of them that she didn't even know, 21 she felt obligated to have sex with. Only nine of them she used protection. And the three family members? What the hell happened, family members? I, I mean, like, what did, what did the family members do to her? She was trying to find herself. This girl had been trying to find herself from the beginning. That was wrong. That is what was wrong with her. You cannot have a mixed child. You cannot have a part white child and a part black child, and then she be adopted, and then stick her with a black parent, and then think that she's going to be okay with that. This, this, I mean, like certain people would be okay with that because we know people that are adopted all the time who don't even want to know about, about their biological parents. They are cool with their adoptive parents. They say, this is my mom and my dad, and I don't even care about the rest. But the fact of the matter is that this girl is mixed. She's half white, half black. But, and when you look at her, you can tell that she's mixed with, you can probably tell a little bit she's mixed with black, but you definitely see that she's mixed with something else. So I wonder how was that for her being with her adoptive mother who already had two children, which I'm assuming that those are probably her biological black children. And now you have this girl in the home that looks mixed and people questioning her about that. Like, is that your mom? Are those your siblings? Her having a complex problem because first of all, you want to know why your adoptive parents gave you up? Like, don't they want to know that? Like, where's my mom at? Why she gave me up? And Centoya actually said that her adoptive mother had told her that your mother didn't want you. She gave you up. Woo, woo, woo. So Centoya said she was going through life thinking this until one day she discovered letters that her biological mother, Gina, had been sending her from jail. She said the pictures had, I mean, these letters had, I love you in it, it had drawings and stuff, and she was pissed. She didn't understand why her adoptive mother would lie to her like that. Now, in the uh, documentary, the adoptive mother is kind of sitting there like, I don't understand. I thought that we had a good relationship. Why she feel like she couldn't come and tell me anything? Well, did you know that she was a little devastated about, about you lying? about her mother, her biological mother, actually sending her letters. That kind of reminded, re reminded me of the color purple. Don't you remember in the color purple when um, Celie, was, was, was that her name? Whoopi Goldberg was um, upset because she thought that her sister hadn't been sending her any letters, but come to find out Danny Glover had been hiding them letters all the time. As soon as I heard Centoya say that, that's the first thing I thought about was like, wow, I bet that that had to hurt her real life. And then that alone in itself would make you not trust the person when they lie to you like that. She said to her adoptive father, she said was mean. She said that he would come up to her and slap her and then would say, I'm just doing it just because. So she definitely had an issue and some problem as far as men. Definitely an issue with that. I think she had a complex problem about her being mixed and really knowing who she is. And then on top of that, not even knowing who your biological parents is. Then the apple don't fall too far from the tree. She didn't even have to know that her mother was a prostitute or a drug addict or an alcoholic or had been raped or did any of them things because spirits usually can really, I mean, spirits can jump from generation to generation. How do I know that? Because I'm a witness. I'm a witness. It happened with me. My mother had me at 16. I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, Essence, at 17. My oldest daughter, Essence, had her first daughter at 18. 16, 17, 18. Apple does not far too, fall too far from the tree. And had we purposely been doing that, did I come out of my mother's vagina saying that I want to have a baby at an early age when I got about 5, 6, 10, 13, was I saying that I'm going to have a baby like my mom? As a matter of fact, I want to have it one year later so we can just go in sequential order 16, 17, and hopefully my, no, no, unknowingly, I end up doing the exact same things. How many times have we seen men go to jail or boys or whatever? They go to jail, probably, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, whatever, and come to find out the father that they never knew. He's sitting in jail serving 20 years or whatever. You, so he didn't have to get to know his father. He didn't have to hang around his father. The apple don't fall too far, don't far fall too far from the tree. It's in the genes, people. It's in the genes. And until you start do, and, and until you do something to be like, I'm gonna fight this and I'm not going to be like this apple is going far, very far, fall very far from the tree, you end up doing the exact same things.
and people are very surface i think people are very surface and they just like to um they don't like to go deeper with things i am a firm believer that everything comes from something firm believer that's how come when i told that story when i went and made mention about the whole Nicki minaj brother had got um found guilty of molesting the 13 year old girl 13 14 year old girl even when i was telling that information even i said with that that something had had to happen to Nicki Minaj's brother in order for him to do what he did. Now, do that make it right? No, it don't. Like, does it make it right that Centoya picked up the gun and shot this man in the back of the head? No, no, it's not right. It does not make it right. But what I'm saying is that I can understand. I can understand some things. Now, going back to the whole Centoya story, do I think that the man, the 43-year-old man, was reaching over on the side of the bed to pull out a gun and shoot her? Mm, I don't necessarily think that. I mean, like, I don't know because because I wasn't there. I think that maybe she was there to rob him because she said in the documentary that Cutthroat said you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're slacking. You need to go out there and make that money. So I think that she went out there to make that money. It kind of puts me into mind. Do y'all remember that that little TV movie that came on with uh, Little Mama? Don't you remember Little Mama? She played as to working in a strip club, sleeping around with men, whatever she was doing. And old boy played in there from Meet the, the Tyler Perry, Meet Meet the Pains or whatever. Don't you remember that? That when when I read when I was reading up on this, it made me think of that obligated she was scared she didn't know what was happening happening she went out there yes she shot him she shot him and killed him she took his wallet his money and his car but obviously she must have really felt some sort of sort of type of way about the whole thing because she went back to see if he was still alive if you know had anybody found out he was dead and then then even took it upon herself to call the police to let them know we don't know maybe if she wouldn't have did that they probably wouldn't have no they would have found out because that sonic cup was still sitting on the table all they had to do was a little dna or something and then found that out the psychologist said she had deep i don't believe that um pretty nikki because i see okay so you've seen it too that the psychologist said she had deep psychological issues you know what they said some of that i believe some some of it i don't some of that i believe because um they were trying to make sure that she won her case so i think that that's where probably some of that came from I think that she has issues as far as being hurt. I mean, she was abused. She was in orgies. They made her do things that she didn't necessarily want to do. There's a lot of pain there. She 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 was broken. She's too smart to say that she got, you know, just some serious psychological issues. To a certain extent, she do, but not, 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 not like crazy. It's just the things that happened to her. And now she's sitting in jail. They gave her 51 years to life. And now because the celebrities came out, Rihanna, T.I., Kim Kardashian, some basketball players came out and um, talking about, you know, bringing this case back up because this happened and she got sentenced in 2006. She went to jail in 2004. She's 29 years old right now. Centoya currently, she went and she got her associates in arts and she's currently working on her bachelor's. I believe that everything happens for a reason and things needed to happen the way that it happened in order for her to be where she's at now. I think that, I don't know if she knows this or not. I don't, I don't know if she's been able to tap into this or not, but she seems pretty bright. I think that she has. That actually, even though she's sitting in a horrible place like jail, this is probably the best place for her. I think that if it wasn't for her being in jail then she probably most likely would have ended up having kids just like her mother and putting her kids in foster care so then that cycle could continue she would have ended up getting on drugs and alcohol really bad and been completely strung out her sex partners would have definitely went up from 36 to probably 60 or 80 something I think the Most High blessed her in a way that, you know, sometimes, I don't know, it's just hard to say, but I think that this is a blessing for her to be in there because for the first time, I think that her mind was able to rest. I think that her vagina was able to rest. 
She didn't have to worry about nobody bothering her about sex anymore. Did you see that part in the documentary where she cut her hair? And the man asked her, why did she cut her hair? And, and she said, because she didn't want to be attractive anymore. She said, being attractive don't get you anywhere, but um, crazy people coming up to you. I just thought that was sad because I think that that happens to a lot of people, to a lot of um, women and stuff. You get caught up in being called pretty and stuff all the time. And sometimes that can be can appear to be a curse. Um, because you want people to acknowledge you and love you for you, not because of what you have in between your legs. Um, she said it that she was looking for love and acceptance, and I can completely understand that. I mean, she was put up for adoption. She don't, for whatever reason, she didn't feel like that her adoptive mother and father was really there for her. So she ended up running the streets, and probably the most attention she ever got in her life was from these guys telling her that she was pretty and giving her all of this attention, but come to find out it wasn't good attention. It was bad attention because they didn't want you mm -hmm. for anything, but for what was in between her legs and they totally treated her and manipulated her. You can easily be, be manipulated into some stuff. You really can. You really can. Cause I've been manipulated into some stuff at an early age too. I bet that I have a lot of people that be watching me. I'm not really probably talking about y'all, but I bet there are people that watch me that be like, I hope Geneva don't mention certain things. I hope she keeps her mouth closed and she watch certain things that she say, because I'm like very close to spilling some beans on some stuff too. Because when I heard this story, I felt like that I had some things in um, common with Centoya based on some things that happened to me um, in my life too, when I was younger and you know, it can break a person. I mean, it's a lot. I believe I believe that she's going to come out of jail. I don't think that she's going to do 51 years. I deserve I believe that, you know, she don't deserve all of that time. Maybe she, you know, maybe maybe 20 years in jail for shooting a guy, you know, because she has been through a lot. She really has been through a lot. It's just a sad story, isn't it? Is that my sister? Hey, my is that my sister? My sister's on here. Hi, sister. Get grown women get manipulated all the time. I know a woman right now that's grown, that's very grown, that's being manipulated. I mean, it's just horrible. And and being manipulated and being made to feel bad about oneself, to start questioning your own self. Am I smart? Am I pretty? Do I, do I make stupid decisions? Can I run a business? Am I a good mother? I mean, you literally start questioning yourself. But I just say that all of that comes from something. All of that comes from something. People be so surface. People, don't be surface. When you hear people do things, wonder about their backstory. Always wonder about the backstory. And I just want to say this to all the fellas out there. Because I think, I think that men tend to think that when women do something, we kind of pacify it. Oh, she's a woman. Oh, you know, the girls. Oh, but then when men do something, we be like, uh-uh, he knew better. He knew better. And, and I think that that bothered men a little bit, you know? So I just want to tell to all my fellas out there that I am open-minded enough to see both sides. Now, do that mean that it's right? It does not mean that it's right, but I am open-minded to see both sides. I watched a documentary before, right? Matter of fact, I'm seeking I find that documentary because it was really probably like sometime last year. And it was about a black woman who used to be a prostitute in Chicago. She's a grown woman now. She changed her life around. And if anything, she's trying to help other women and young ladies get off the street because she's been there, done that. She understand about the manipulation, the beating, the pimps, the running away from home, the drugs. She understood about all of that. OK, now in this documentary. She, while she's teaching the kids, you know, talking, you know, talking to the young ladies, she has a former pimp come in. Now, this former pimp was not her former pimp. It was her former pimp friend. OK, now this pimp, he go former pimp. He goes to start talking about why he became a pimp or basically his backstory because you sometimes want to know the backstory now i don't remember exactly what he said but for the most part he said that as a child he seen his mother get beat all the time he said all the time he seen his mother getting beaten okay 
Now he said that as he got older, he didn't think that he was thinking that he was going to become a pimp, but he says somewhere in there, he started feeling like that if you want a woman to listen to you, you going you you should probably beat her, smack her. If you smack her, beat her, then you can get her to do what you want to do. Now, some people might say that that's excuses, but the fact of the matter is this is that man's story. He's telling you how he got up to that point. Now, there are all types. Some people say, I ain't going because that ain't how you handle a situation. No, it's not how you handle the situation, but there are all different type of people that handle situations all different type of ways. There could have been a, a boy who watched his mother get beat all the time that handled that situation in a few different scenarios when he got older. One, next thing you know, your son's sitting up there getting beat or mistreated in a relationship. And you sitting up there like, David, David, get your man together. You don't let this woman just slap on you and stuff. You don't let her treat you, you know, just mistreat you and, you know, whatever son in this type of way. Could have went that way. He could have seen that stuff and been like, I'm never doing that and then next thing you know he being suckered and 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 slapped around in a relationship or you can a young man could have seen his mother getting beat on all the time and then uh like this boy have a lack of respect for women have no respect for women because that's what you've seen then you feel like that feel like that that's what you're supposed to do or you can see that and then you grow up and you just put it, I will never hit a woman. I will always have respect for her. Not to say that she going to hit you, but you just learn how to handle the situation. Man, there's all types. There's all types. There can be a mother that's on drugs, really, really bad. Different, same, same situation, being treated different ways. You can have a mother on drugs really bad. On one hand, you can have a child that sees his mother on drugs He's trying to help his mother. He's trying to cook for her. Mom, you need to eat. He walking around on the streets trying to find his mother. Mom, why are you in this drug house? Pulling her up out the drug house, trying to take her home, trying to put her in a rehab. It can go that way. Or you can have a child that sees the mother on drugs all the time. And next thing you know, they on drugs. They got a drug problem too, unknowingly, because they probably didn't plan on getting on drugs, but unknowingly, they're on drugs. Or or it can go where next thing you know, they have no respect for their mother. Not a one respect. Don't give a damn about her. Don't you remember that movie Sugar Hill? I'm always popping out with movies, but don't y'all remember the movie Sugar Hill? Don't you remember when Wesley Snipes, cause it was Wesley Snipes and it was that other guy, they played his brothers and then they had the father that was a drug addict. Wesley Snipes went over there, fed his father, loved his father, checked up on the father, daddy, is you okay? Both of the brothers seen the exact same thing in their life. They seen the father turn the mother out on drugs. They seen all of that craziness in the home, but both brothers handled it in two separate ways. Wesley Snipes was there for his father, very concerned for his father, loved him. The other brother didn't give a damn about his father, hated him, blamed him for what happened to his mother from his mother overdosing. And matter of fact, at the end of the movie, didn't the other brother end up killing the father that Wesley Snipes was hurt over, couldn't believe that his brother would do that? It plays out in all situations, but people love to be like, you know, just because they feel like they would handle it in a certain way than everybody across the board should. No, you got to be open-minded about life. You have to understand that there are all types of people and people handle things in all different types of ways. And I think that if we can get that through our skulls, then maybe we might not be so judgmental quickly and may be able to kind of look into things and be like, okay, okay, I think I may understand where that's coming from. Not to say it's right. But I think that I may understand where that could have came from. You understand what I'm saying? You understand that? Yes, absolutely, sister. Everyone interpretation is different. Thank you, sister. I'm no, did not Apache flower. I went far back. I did with uh Sugar Hill. That's because every time I see something or I, you know, it always reminds me of a movie or a saying or a documentary or something that helps me to better understand things. You know, but at least by giving that example, if people have seen that movie, they can remember how both brothers was raised the exact same way, but they both, like my sister said, interpreted different. So 
thank you, Denise. Is that you? I cannot really. It was a really sad movie. It really was a very sad movie. Nikki said, that's what I do, but there is a psychology to everything that people do. That's how black people were able to be enslaved physically and mentally. Willie Lynch explained how to do it, and it worked. It absolutely, it sure did. Peach said, I may understand it in some was not judgmental. I see things differently. I may understand in some, in some ways, not judgmental. I see things differently. Oh, she said, it's me, Geneva. I'm surprised that you're even on here. Well, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and talk about that story because, oh, it's just such a disconnect. She said, oh, she put the birthday up. That's you then. That's you. If you put that birthday June 4th, 1983, then that is definitely, that's definitely my sister. Right. And you know what? You know, even even with my sister, Denise, now that you're on here, me and my sister was raised in the exact same household with the exact same mother <laughs> who was the exact same way with both of us. But it's funny because even me and her um, handled things differently when it came to the mother. Why? Because we're two different people. You understand? Even though we're both sisters and we both came from the same mother, at the end of the day, we are still two different people and may handle handle things or see things differently. So, yeah. Oh, and other thing I wanted to say, there's such a huge disconnect with men and, and women. I don't know if it's just black men and black women or men and women in general, but a lot of women, when it came to this Centoya story, they said that she got what she deserved. She um, she shouldn't have killed the man. Um, she's a whore. She wanted to sleep with all them people, you know? And I was just like, wow. I, you know, like, I, I, I don't know if men ever tap into anything. Like, do you think about your sisters and brothers or, you know, I mean, your sisters or your mother or how you would feel if your daughter was 16 years old? Like, she's 16. She old enough. She know better. To a certain extent, to a certain extent, but since when is 16 so damn grown? I mean, like six, I mean, 16, you know better, but still, it's still young. You understand what I'm saying? I was 14 years old, and I'm about to go there a tad bit. I was 14 years old being having 30 something year old men step to me. Really? And they started off, and then the thing about it is that when I was 14 years old, I never felt the need to lie about my age. So I never just walked, you know, somebody, a man, a guy asked me, how old are you? And I'd just be like, I'm 18, I'm 20. I never did. I said I was 14. So a man will come up to me and say, how old are you? Oh, no, no, come and try to talk to me, whatever. And then he would say his age. He, he said he was 21. I said, I'm 14. This nigga turned around and said he was 31 years old and still wanted to holler still wanted to holler and he was 30 some years old and i told the truth about my age but this happened several times this this this, this happened many 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 times now of course i had issues i know i had issues because i was trying to find myself i was looking for love but what was his issues the reason why you would be coming for a 14 year old and she tells you that she's 14 and you still trying to holler what was his issues? Like, what had he been through in his life? I think both sides needs, you know, need to check both sides. It's not just the men. It's not just the women. It's both sides needs to be checked, really, because we both have issues across the board. We, we all have issues. But she shouldn't have killed him. But I think because she was black, they gave her the max that they could give her. I think that that's what it was, too, because listening to her attorney and stuff, they they just went hard on her. They 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 just did. Um, she should. I don't think that she should have killed him either because I, you know, especially the way he was turned in the bed. It's not like he had a gun. He was pointing pointing the gun at her. That's not what I seen. I don't think that she should have killed him either. I really do think that she probably went in there to rob him or whatever. Um, but you know, there was. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's, it's just hard with these stories. It, it's hard. But yeah, it was, it was a sad story. But the reason why I wanted to bring up race a little bit with this story is because of a conversation that I had yesterday with my daughter, Maya. Lust and perv Oh, lust. Definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's all they was thinking about was sex. So, so that's all they was thinking about. But uh, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. 
Oh, I was having a conversation with my daughter, Maya, yesterday. And we were kind of talking about race because uh, Maya is, is mixed with black and Puerto Rican. I'm black and her father's Puerto Rican. And Maya has a lack of relationship with her dad. And we were having a conversation yesterday uh, because Maya doesn't know Spanish. She knows some Spanish. She can understand Spanish more than um, she could uh, say it. I don't know. Should I do a different video for this one? Because I think that this should be a whole different video because this is a whole different topic on um, having kids with, with people of other races because I feel like that I can speak on that because I've done that. So I've had the chance to sit back and watch that unfold, especially when the parent is not in, in, in the child's life, you know, because I have uh, children and all of them don't have the same father. So I have children. I have, I'm black. The father's black. So we had all black children, but the father wasn't in the life. And I feel like with those situations, the only whammy, and it's not only, but the only whammy in that one is that the father is not in the life. So that's huge, but at least I don't have to try to teach my children about the black sad because I'm black. So I know about the history. I can talk to you about what it is to be black or to deal with racism or prejudice or how we talk or, you know, the food that we like to eat or whatever the case may be. So that wasn't an issue. Just the father not being around was an issue. But then when I got to Maya, I start realizing that it was a whole different scenario. This was a double whammy for her because not only was her father not around, but the Hispanic father wasn't around. I can't teach her how to be Puerto Rican. I can't teach her no damn Spanish. I can't teach her, teach her how to make rice and gondolas. I mean, I guess I can, but it's never the same from her father. I mean, she would go and visit her dad. And then, you know, like, I guess he would um, make, make, make her like Spanish mixtapes and she would come back blasting, blasting the Spanish music and the music all loud in the room or whatever. And all I can do is sit there and smile because she was feeling good about learning about the other side of her. But then when that disconnect happened, I can see how that really hurt it, how that really bothered her. Um, because now, how do I handle that situation? How do I teach her? how to be, I mean, I can't teach her how to, how to be Puerto Rican. It's just a double whammy for her. In addition to being raised in a household where everybody looks black. I look black. Jasmine look black. My, my daughter, oldest daughter, Essence look black. Jaden look black. We all look black. But then there's Maya that looks different. And then I raised my children in a mostly white suburb. So, People didn't necessarily know what she was mixed with. They kind of seen her and kind of thought that maybe she was mixed with white, white and maybe something else, maybe white and Hispanic, maybe white and something, but not really sure, not totally knowing if she was mixed with black until they seen her mother pop up, you know, or until they seen Jasmine or, or Essence or something. So that was another issue for a long time in Maya's life. She did not like to wear her hair curly. Like right now, you'll see Maya with her hair all fluffed up, but that's not, that, that wasn't Maya for a long time. She like flat ironed her hair damn near on a daily basis. Why? Because there was a, a complex problem because she was around the white kids all the time and their long, um, be the Al Sassoon hair blowing in the wind and Maya felt some sort of type of way because her hair wasn't blowing in the wind like that, you know, because she had more fluffier hair. I mean, man, I, I, I've had to deal with a lot. I mean, just watching Maya unfold watching her life unfold and seeing the things that she had to deal with. Now we've moved to an area because what I decided to do was my son kind of came to me a few years ago and said that he was tired of living in the area that we was living in. He wanted to be around more black people. So then I moved uh, where it's a little bit more, you know, mixed area. And now my daughter said for the first time, people don't even realize that she's mixed with black. They're asking her, what is she mixed with? Like, is she white? in something or and she said that like that's the first time that has really happened in her life and uh it's just an issue for her it's just an issue so i feel bad 
for <laughs> choosing the person that I chose. There's a part of me to feel like, you know, if, you know, at least if I would have chose a black man, she wouldn't have to deal with the double whammy. You just got to deal with the father not being around, but not the father's not dealing around. And you feel like that whole other part of you is missing. The whole other thing is missing. And like I said, I don't know what to do to fix that problem. But all I can do is try to explain to my of the things that she may have to deal with later on in life because she hasn't really dealt with a lot of prejudice. But I try to tell her that there's a strong possibility as you get older that you may have to deal with more, you know, um, with black women, too, because she I don't think she's really had to deal with prejudice as far as black women being prejudiced against her, which I know it can happen because I've done it before in my life. So, you know, but I try to let her know, just whisper in her ear. So if these things happen later on in life, she's not shocked by it. If she finds herself talking to trying to trying to talk to a black man and then see a black woman get a little irritated with her. Like, who are you? You ain't black. You ain't whatever. You know, like how she might have to deal with that or, because it happens. It happens. So I personally don't think, I think you should stick with your own race. That's what I think. Cause there's no guarantee that the other person of, of the other nationality is going to stick around. And if they don't, how are you going to show them how to be that other person? I mean, like, how do you teach them about the culture and the food? I mean, if a white person is raising a white and black child, can they teach them how to be black? So if it's a white mother and she had a, had a baby with a black man and a black man leaves, can that white mother teach that mixed baby how to be black? No, you can't. You can't. You can't. I mean, you can make as much greens and chitlins if you want to. You can try to do French braids and say slang words if you want to, but you can never authentically correctly teach that child that other black that 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 black side of them you just can't you just can't so my opinion is you should stick with your own hand it just may be easier so at least if the person leaves or it's not there you don't feel like it's just there's a whole lot more to it and i'm just speaking from experience there's a whole lot more to this whole interracial thing, having these mixed babies that people aren't really talking about people seem to be infatuated by the hair, the skin tone. Oh, you're so cute to be mixed. And look at the color ass. That's neither here or there. That 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 whole physical thing, that's neither here or there. If if anything, that physical thing is what's going to be following that child around and may be an issue for them later on in life. So so the thing that you're applauding and like, oh my God, it's so cute. Maybe an issue for them later on having the color eyes, having that type of hair, having that skin tone, and having both the owl as parents. Just may be an issue for that child later on, but that's just my opinion on it. That's just my opinion on mixed interracial dating and having these mixed babies. You may not want to do that. It's not necessarily the best thing. And I think the re and somebody had made a comment on that video that me and Chad did, and they had said something about. I'm assuming that they had not even watched the whole video to even know or seen any of my videos to know that I, that I even have a child that's mixed because they made some mention about that I wouldn't be able to get somebody of another nationality. Now, the thing that kind of annoyed me about that was not the fact that I could be like, yes, I could get a bit get of another national. I was like... <sighs> So getting somebody of a, of another nationality is a pointer? What, is that a gold star? I didn't date up when I dated him. He dated up when he dated me. I'm the strongest woman he will ever date in the history of his life. That Puerto Rican man that I had my back, I am the strongest woman that he will ever date in the history of his life. He dated up when he dated this black woman. Geneva did not date up when I dated him. Dating any other nationality besides my own race is not dating up. And telling me that you probably couldn't get somebody of another national. Now, I don't want they, I, I, I don't care. And, and, and what does that have to do with anything? My black men are the best black men. That's all that Geneva ever has needed in her life. I didn't know that at the time, but Geneva knows that now. So sitting up there telling me that I could not, and, and then what? <laughs> if anything, they can't get this. It happened once, it ain't gonna happen again. Sorry for them, because this is the strongest, the strongest, most best woman that you a person could ever really have in the history of their life. So I just was like, Lord Jesus, 
this person think dating other nationalities is a step up. I know majority of the world may, may think that way. Black women, if a black woman can date a Hispanic man or a white man, or if an Asian man won't them, that's a step up. Let me tell y'all something. Back in the day, when Maya's daddy first approached me and he used to come to me, he used to be like, oh, you're so black and shiny. I've never seen anybody so black and shiny before. Your skin is just so shiny. First of all, I thought his ass was a little racist, so I didn't understand where that was coming from until a little later when he said that it was a compliment. Um, when I got with him, I was a little shocked that he was even interested in me. I was like, what? I didn't even know that, whatever. But as time went on, I started to realize, you know, that that ain't nothing to be like, oh, my God, he wanted me. Because honest to God, people, he dated up <laughs> when he came this way. And I don't know if he ever going to find that again in the history of his life. I'm sorry, boo, you just probably ate. But, yeah, dating a black woman, you date up. So they better recognize. To every person out there, let me explain this to you. When you date a black woman, especially a black woman that got all her sisters and stuff together, because not all of us is correct. We're not all correct. But the strong, smart ones that got their brains and sisters together for the most part, when you find you a black woman, you have found something special. You have dated up five gold stars for you. You get all the pointers, an A on your report card. Good job and applause, two thumbs up. You did great for you. Don't think that by you coming to us that we done dated up with you. Don't, don't stop thinking that. I know the world has told you that, but let me just change your train of thought. No, Google. no, they laughed. They, they, they laughed. We some of the strongest women in the history of life, in the history of life. So anytime you date a black woman, you date it up. I'm just keeping it real. But anyway, um, I'm about done with this whole conversation because I'm still on here talking. I was supposed to be talking about one thing. I switched to a whole nother subject. Let me see what some of my people are saying. Peach said, just teach them how to be strong. That's it. The other side just missed out on knowing her. Absolutely. They did. They did. And I am trying to teach her how to be strong. Uh, who said that? Peach. Peach said that. And then Miriam said, I was blessed. Dad was not around, but kept close to her aunt and grandmother. Absolutely. See, see now, isn't that all? Oh. That means a lot that even if you cannot have the dad around, you can still have the, the family around. That helps out a lot. But if there's a disconnect with the father and the whole family, that can be kind of traumatic on that child. That can definitely be traumatic on the child because the child is already having issues going through the mind. Did I do something wrong? I don't know what they don't like me. I don't know. You know, and then when you start putting race and color in it, cultures, languages, foods, it's, it's just a whole nother ball game. And then Jackie said, uh, oh, wait, God give us advice not to be yoked with non-believers. It has nothing to do with cultures. Uh, Katie said, we as black people are cursing ourselves because we keep calling them white pure. Why do you think they keep saying black and white? Black folks does exist, but no such thing as white pure people. I agree with that. You know what? Some Maya told me yesterday that some kids have been coming to her, you know, because her last name is... <coughs> she got her dad's last name so then they were like do you know spanish and she's like no i don't know spanish so then they're making little comments to her for the first time in her life saying things to her like oh you're not really puerto rican or you're not really spanish if you don't know spanish language and that kind of irritated me a little bit just for the simple fact that i was like um well little do these people know that they're not even really speaking an authentic language. We all are speaking the white man's language. Spanish is nothing but the white man's language. That language was already spoken by Christopher Columbus and the rest of them people. Remember, they were from Spain, Spain, the Queens, when Christopher Columbus went to go get the money for the expedition. Come on, people, the Nina de Pinta or whatever in the Santa Maria, Spain. They were speaking Spanish, Spanish speaking white people, okay? English is nothing but the white man's language. Spanish is nothing but the white man's language. To be in all actuality, if you even look up Mexicans and Puerto Ricans, and you can look it up in something that is based off of white facts, which is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is based off of white facts. If you look up Puerto Ricans or Mexicans on Wikipedia, it will tell you that they are European, that they are mixed with European and Native American mostly for the Mexicans. Don't quote me on that as far as the Puerto Ricans. 
but a lot of them unless you see dark skinned ones are european but they don't even fully know that they don't even know so to come so for the children who unknowingly because they don't know no better they'll come to my child and tell her that you ain't fully puerto rican because you don't know your white man's spanish language huh <sighs> it's, it's a lot she gonna have to deal with in life so i'm just trying to prepare her for that just trying to prepare her but little do people know that all of this is white <laughs> That the whole damn thing is pretty much white. That the, there, and I try to explain that to Maya too about who she really is, because I don't want nobody else to tell her that first. I want her to get that for me first. So if anyone else mentions this, she's not surprised by it. Get it? Listen, listen to Mama first. The Mama will explain things to you first, the best way she can. But anyway, people, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. I done did two. I done talked about two different things in this video. I done talked about the centoya brown and i done talked about having mixed children and i should have did a completely different video for that one i really should but anyway make sure you follow me on facebook and instagram at geneva's closet and go check out my websites at geneva's closet ent.com and geneva's closet dot net is my sister gone it does it does flower she told me yesterday, she said that it's really starting to bother her now because she's getting older. That's what she said. She's never really said that before. She said, for some reason, it's starting to bother her just a little bit more. So then I said to her, I said, well, Maya, you know, you, you, you know, you can pick up the phone and call him. Like, I know that you feel that, you know, as an adult in which he should as the adult and as the father, he should pick up the phone and say something to her. But I said, Maya, but you can, you know, some sometimes the children have to lead the way. Maybe you want to be the first one to pick up the phone and call him and say, Dad, Poppy, what is wrong? What is wrong, Poppy? Why aren't you contacting me? Why aren't you calling me? Why don't, why do I seem to not matter now that you done moved on, got married, had another child, and now have stepchildren? Why do I seem not to matter, Father? But she, her comment on that was, Nope. She said she's not doing it. She said that's his job and he should do it. So, you know, and I've tried to do it, but he don't like the things that I have to say. And it's not even that I'm hollering and screaming on the phone. I'm trying to be as cool, calm and collect as I can be, but voice my opinion and stuff. But, you know, but I think the kicker about this whole thing is that Jack, Maya's father don't stay two hours away. He don't live in another state or another city or town. He don't live an hour or two away. He don't live 45 minutes away. He don't live 30 minutes away. He don't live 20 minutes away. He don't live 10 minutes away. This Puerto Rican man lives about eight, five to eight minutes away from where I live at. That's where he lives. And when I first moved over here, he would come pick up Maya and both of them would go work out because he loved to work out and Maya loved to work out too. But then a disconnect happened and he and they stopped talking so now you know my daughter's feelings is hurt and and i don't like that and as a mother bear that makes you want to sometimes go get your shotgun and go and do a drive-by shooting on somebody be like well then what the hell is the purpose of you being here then if you can't do what you're supposed to do you know so i don't even see what purpose you serve and it really makes me want to go get a get a get some type of caliber of gun and go do a drive-by you know what i mean that's how I feel. If if I didn't think I would get in trouble for it and, and I didn't think I would get arrested, if I knew that I can go do a drive-by, do my damage, let the damage sit there for however long I want to do it and then come back and thwing and then fix it back, then I would. I would go do a drive-by and um, just eliminate people that's serving no purposes. But that's just how I feel because I'm mama bear and I don't like my children being treated a certain way. But yeah. Yes, Puerto Ricans. Yes, I mean, but you got to see which Puerto Ricans are. Yes, they are mixed with African and Indian and Spaniards. And yeah, you usually know because there's something in there that usually let you know that they're mixed with a little black and even even the Mexicans too, you know, because I did a little research or whatever on Mexicans and found out that a lot of them are mixed with black. And they know that when they're over in Mexico, but then they come over here to the United States and we kind of just look at them as, you know, being a white version of Mexicans and we can't really see the black in there. And they ain't finna tell you that they mix with black. 
So they just come over here and hey, bam, I'm just 100% Mexican, whatever that is supposed to be, 100% Mexican. You don't even know that they got black in them. You didn't, you didn't, no idea that it's black mixed in there. But yeah, there are Puerto Ricans that's mixed with, uh, have some black in them. Because if anything, I think Maya's grandmother on her father's side of the family is dark skinned. So her father's mother is dark skinned. So you can tell that there's some black mix there. But his, but Maya's father, father, it doesn't look like it. They look more like the maybe the European or the Taino um, Puerto Ricans or Spaniards or whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about for the most part. Yeah, pretty Nikki comment is just fine. She is definitely still the child. She is still the child. Yes, yes, she is still the child. And she will always be the child. But sometimes kids got to, sometimes kids just have to be the adult and, and, you know, step up to the adults sometimes and be like, look, I know that there's an issue. And I mean, I wish he would do it, but I don't think he is because he's very stubborn. So I don't think that he is. She says she dated a Dominican and he was fine. You know, I got to do the hand. He was fine, tall, and chocolate. Go, on, Jackie girl. You got you to give it up for the Dominican. You got to give it up for the Dominicans. Dominican. I love the Dominican Republic. Their food is very light. They got some very light food. food the food that I ate in the Dominican Republic tasted completely different than the food over here in the United States. Completely different. Fish tasted different, the meat tasted different, the vegetables, the milk, everything just tasted different. And there was light when I ate, it wasn't like heavy on my, you know what I mean? Like, because I hate to eat and feel sluggish and like, oh, I need to go to sleep because I feel like, because I'm getting itis, I hate that. But Rico, they have some that, that don't even look Puerto Rican. What did you with Williams? You said I feel Maya because I never wanted to do that either. Oh, call the call the father, make the first step. She shouldn't even have to do that because she's just a baby. She's only 16 years old. Like, why does she have to call a grown man to say, grown man, what is your issue? You know, like those are some issues with him. But I know one thing that there's no way on God's green earth will I ever believe that the most high that God will allow you to make a baby and then not take care of that child. Because at the end of the day, like I had to explain to my son, because I asked my son, son, where do babies come from? He said, babies come from the woman. I had to re-explain that to him. I said, well, we, um, we carry the baby, but that's not originally where the baby comes from. Originally, the baby comes from the man. The man puts the baby inside the woman. That's that's how that happened. And then once the baby gets inside the woman, then the woman and the man, their stuff start doing things together inside that woman's belly and she carries the baby. But no, um, babies come from men. There's no way on God's green earth that I will ever believe that the most high that God will allow men to carry sperm babies in their testicles just so you can spit them out inside of a woman and then decide at any point that you don't want to take care of that child. Karma on you, karma on your whole life. And I seriously believe that. Karma on your whole life. I don't believe that you can do that and then die a happy death. I don't think that you can do that. I think that in your life, you're going to have turmoil and you're not going to be happy. I just believe that. There are going to be things in your life that you are not happy about. I feel like that I'm getting older and getting happier, falling back a little bit. Other people, I see that they getting older and angrier. Like, what's all the anger about? Like, what's all the bitterness and stuff about? Stuff still ain't right in your life? Hey, it could be karma. could be some things that's never going to settle right in your life because you ain't even doing what you're supposed to be doing. But then that's just my opinion. That's my opinion of being a single mother. That's my opinion of being a single mother of a mixed child. It's just my opinion. She do. She do. And I'm very proud of Maya. I'm very proud of the person that she's become. Yes, his seed. Actually, his seed that came out of his testicles. His testicles. That's a huge responsibility that God, you know, because the responsibility keeps being put off on us women. Yes, but... 
That's a huge responsibility that the Most High God gave men to allow them to carry babies in their testicles. And I don't even think that they realize the huge responsibility that comes with that. They don't know that because because they're able to shoot it out and shoot it out in a woman. And a lot of the times, or sometimes, I don't want to say a lot, sometimes get up and walk away. And then the responsibility, the burden falls off on the woman. Why she ain't doing what she's supposed to. Why wasn't she the type of mother? You, 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 you ladies, you woman, you mother, you, you, you. Not the man that the most high put the, put the babies in. He put the babies in the testicles. They put the babies in your testicles. You don't have a huge, I believe they got even a bigger responsibility and that's why they're going to get in trouble for the things that they do. Believe that, believe that, believe it, believe it, soak it up and let it sell. You're going to get yours for all the fathers that's not doing what you're supposed to do. Look at me, look at me, look, you're going to get yours. Believe that. Just my opinion though. Just, just my opinion. But anyway, people, make sure you like, share and subscribe and follow whatever this video, make sure y'all do it. You have a fabulous, wonderful morning, 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 Friday. Might be back on with Chad again. Never know what Chad want to talk about. We may have some things to talk about, people. I don't know. But you have an awesome Friday. And I, well, matter of fact, just have an awesome weekend, period. People just have a fabulous weekend and have a great day. I will talk to you later. Bye.